Number 10. John Quincy Adams had the highest estimated IQ of any United States president at 168. In second is Thomas Jefferson at 153 and then John F. Kennedy at 150, with the average for presidents being 135. For more perspective, Albert Einstein's IQ is estimated to have been between 160 and 180. Number 9. Adams described slavery as a foul stain on the nation that in any form contradicted the basic principles of the Declaration of Independence. In the House of Representatives, he led the fight to overturn the gag rule, which prevented discussion of slavery, and in the Amistad case, he successfully defended a group of Africans who had revolted against their would-be slavers. Though he died nearly a decade before the Civil War, he predicted it was the inevitable result of the slavery debate. Number 8. One of Adams' favorite hobbies was playing the flute. He picked up the hobby in his college days and continued playing all throughout his life. His diary often makes mention of playing for half an hour in the evenings. He even wrote his own compositions, though he was always self-deprecating, maintaining that as an American, he simply wasn't as good at music as Europeans. Number 7. Adams was the earliest president to be photographed. This photo was taken in 1843, when he was 76 and serving in Congress. Many assume Adams to be much older when he was president because of the photo's popularity. But when the photo was taken, he'd actually been out of the White House for 18 years. The earliest president who was photographed while in office was 11th President James K. Polk in 1848. Number 6. In 1811, President James Madison nominated Adams to the Supreme Court, and the nomination received unanimous confirmation by the Senate. But Adams turned it down. As court justices serve for life, he was turning down permanent job security, but this was actually his motive. As a young man, he had worked in law and hated every second of it. He preferred work in politics and diplomacy. Number 5. As president, Adams had an elegant vision for America. He wanted the government to focus on internal improvements and education in science and astronomy. These sentiments were out of touch with the common man. Adams' clash with the Democratic will was an echo of the conflict between his father and the Jeffersonians. Number 4. In 1826, a recently unemployed army surgeon threatened to murder President Adams unless he got his job back. The would-be assassin arrived at the White House, and in response, Adams met with him. He merely considered the man to be desperate, and the threat to be in effect of a momentary alienation of the mind. Adams explained that there was nothing he could do at the moment, but seeing how sympathetic Adams was, the man recanted his threat and apologized. Later, Adams secured a position for him, and the two actually remained in contact well into Adams' final years. Number 3. Adams is the only president to have met both George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. He first met Washington when he was only 22, and later served as Washington's minister to the Netherlands. Decades later, 80-year-old Adams was serving in the House of Representatives when he met 38-year-old Abraham Lincoln, a freshman representative from Illinois. They only served together for three months before Adams' death. Number 2. Adams was the first non-founding father president. This was reflected in his change of fashion. He wore trousers instead of knee breeches, didn't wear a powdered wig, and adopted a short haircut rather than having long hair tied in a queue. In actuality, these fashion changes were already underway during Monroe's administration, but Monroe purposefully maintained the traditional dress of the other founders. Number 1. Prior to the Civil War, most Americans had a greater sense of loyalty to their state than to their country. Adams, however, was an early adopter of national loyalty. Quote, The longer I live, the stronger I find my national feelings grow upon me, and the less of my affections are compassed by partial localities. For more than a decade in total, he served in various foreign countries as a United States minister, giving him a different perspective than most Americans. 
If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and donating on Patreon. Donations from two to fifteen dollars a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.